What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got a long overdue knife review slash overview to do for you guys. This is the um, very recognizable Cold Steel Code 4. This is not the first time that I have handled this knife but it is the first time um, that it has appeared on this channel. Um, so the first time I handled it, um, it was back when I had a um, a different impression of Cold Steel. Number one, I did not like that they were they looked like American-made knives, but they were made in Taiwan. I didn't like their marketing. I didn't like, you know, just how crazy, over-the-top tactical they look. And I walked into a local uh, shop that's no longer here, and I saw that sitting there, and it said Cold Steel. And I thought, that doesn't look nearly like what I, you know, expected Cold Steel knives to look like. That one looks kind of more straightforward. And I remember pulling it out and handling it and thinking... That's a that's an okay knife, but it's made in Taiwan, so you know I don't like it. And uh, I have since gotten over that, um, and I've handled many cold steel knives. Um, I have a completely different outlook. They still definitely make some over the top stuff that doesn't really have. Um, it, it kind of goes into um, a, an unnecessary realm in terms of usage, but um, the Code Four is um, in kind of a special place. So. Um, I can't wait to talk about it. This knife was provided to me, like all the other cold, st uh, cold steel knives I've reviewed this week, by Mr. Boyd McDonald on um, Instagram. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to take a look at these. I've had a lot of fun, and um, I'm, I'm really happy to um, expand my view on cold steel as a brand. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and get a measurement of the Code 4 here. Uh, cold Steel Code 4 coming in at 8.5 inches on the dot. From tip to scale, you're looking at, in places, as long as 3 and 3 quarter inches of blade. The actual cutting edge is about 3.4 inches. Um, so, nice size there, definitely. How about, excuse me, some size comparisons. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So, you can see there, this is actually a really good size comparison. Let me see if I can turn my light. No, nope, we're just going to get some glare. Sorry about that. Um, the Rat 1 is a really good size comparison for this knife, both in um, length and kind of profile. You can see there, um, obviously, each knife has its own unique design and a different blade shape, but in terms of the overall space that the knives take up from this angle, there are a lot of similarities. So in terms of carry profile, you're looking at in this general area. Um, how about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall, so just a little bit shorter than the Code 4. How about up against the Benchmade Reptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the newest addition to my lineup of size comparison knives, the Spyderco Para 3, which comes in at seven and a quarter inches. Yesterday, I think I said seven and a half. It's actually seven and a quarter. Um, let me give you guys an example of the action. Surprisingly, you know, with this being a lockback and it runs on phosphor bronze, I didn't expect anything spectacular, but it's actually really smooth. It's really smooth. You can deploy it um, with the thumb stud. Um, you can deploy it smoothly just like this. It's really nice. That is a really nice feeling lockback. In fact, that's probably the smoothest action I have ever felt on a knife like this and definitely the smoothest cold steel knife that I've ever felt. Um, this looks to be a brand new knife. It does not look to be one um, that has been used. Boyd can correct me if he's watching, but it looks like this is brand new, so this will be a good example for review. Let's get a weight on this guy. Go ahead and turn my scale on there. Overall weight of the Cold Steel Code 4 coming in at 4.23 ounces. Go again. 4.2 ounces. So um, at 8.5 inches, 4.2 ounces is not something that bothers me at all, especially considering how thin this guy is. You can see these aluminum scales. Yes, these are aluminum scales. Uh, are very thin. So this way up against the Ritter Hogue. Thinner than the Ritter Hogue. How about the PM2? Definitely thinner there. How about the Rat? Definitely thinner. And I guess we can do the pair of three, but it's the same thickness as the PM2. Um, blade stock thickness, actually, I think it's probably, it's close to the PM2. It's probably 135,000. So it looks to be between the Ritter Hogue at 125 and the PM2 at 145. So 
Nice. Um, that puts it in a lot of sweet spots for a lot of people. That's pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of this knife. On this version of it, you have a clip point blade made of CPM S35 VN steel. Of course, cold steel knives, all except for the Formax, two variants of it, um, are made in Taiwan. Formax has Italy and USA. In fact, is the is the USA Formax the only cold steel knife that's made in the United States? I don't know. I'd be interested to know. Anyways, beautiful satin finish on this CPM S35 VN clip point blade. This is honestly, this is a beautiful blade. I, I love simplicity and they have nailed that classic clip point style with a, a modern look. I love the grind lines. Um, I love the slight reflectivity of the blade, how the flat um, kind of runs into the swedge here. This is just very, very beautiful. I like it. Um, I also don't mind the NASCAR style Code 4 logo. You know, some people might not like that. It is kind of like Code 4, you know, it's just kind of like in your face. And, you know, Cold Steel does that. And, you know, people like me can complain about it all that we want, but it's not like it's not working for them, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I can make fun of them. Other people can be like, oh, they're so like, you know, take themselves seriously in flames and heavy metal and, you know, chopping 14 bottles in half. And sit. You know, we can make fun of them for that, but it's working. It's clearly working. And on top of that, they have models that I've reviewed that I have said, yeah, these are incredible. Like the American Lawman, an amazing knife. Honestly, one of the best folding knives out there, in my opinion. So, you know, I can crack jokes all I want, but it's not, it's not slowing them down. Um, anyways, moving down here, you have a nice little sharpening choil. Um, you also have, it's not really a forward choil, but it is definitely roomy enough for you to get your fingers up there. I also like the shape and design of the thumb studs. There's plenty of room for engagement on the thumb studs and they're in the right place. It is going to be a little bit awkward flip, flicking this guy out initially, um, but you'll get used to it. Can I reverse flick it? Yeah, you can with a little bit of wrist. Oh, almost got it. So let me see if I, I'm going to try one more time. Reverse flick with no wrist. Ah, I can't get it, <laughs> but you can definitely do it with a little bit of, uh, oh God, you can definitely do it with a little bit of wrist. Obviously somebody with a more practiced hand is going to be better at that than me. Um, this of course utilizes the cold steel triad lock, which, um, is an awesome lock. Um, there's no blade play up, down, left or right on this really, really nice. Um, you've got a simple Torx head, um, sort of polished domed, uh, pivot there. That's really nice. You have the pins that hold, um, the uh, back lock in place and you have two screws back here, which are, I don't think, are they the tiny size? Are they? Yeah, they look like they're the little tiny size. I don't like that size. I wish Cold Steel would use some bigger screws. Just use one size up so that we don't have to worry about, you know, messing up the little tiny Torx heads that we've got in our tool slots. Um, but, but that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. You have an aluminum back, backspacer that matches the aluminum here. It's, it's looking a little flat, dark earth in the camera, but it's not. It's, uh, it's just like a bead blast. I mean, it's hard code anodized um, aluminum. So uh, this is 6061 T6 aluminum, not milled. Wait, I don't think it's milled. Yeah, it's not milled out on the inside. Um, plenty strong enough. Um, you guys should not be concerned with the strength of 6061. That's aircraft aluminum. Um, and uh, we wouldn't be using it for that if it didn't have um, enough structural integrity, you know, for it, for a, an aircraft. It's certainly going to have enough structural integrity for the handle on a folding knife. Um, and also, the main points of pressure or the, the spots that are likely to be damaged, you know, due to force is going to be more so the lock and the blade. Um, so if you're looking at this knife and you're thinking in terms of maximum durability is aluminum the best? Yeah, it's fine. It's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with uh, 6061 T6 aluminum. Um, on the other side, we've got the typical cold steel pocket clip, which is fine. I don't mind it at all. It's actually a really nice pocket clip and you can mount it on the left-hand side, making this a fully ambidextrous lock, uh, or knife given the position and nature of the, um, the triad lock. So that's really, really cool. There is no option for tip down. Um, so sorry about that. Um, that's not an issue for me. I prefer to carry things tip up. The other side of the knife is exactly the same as the front, except the pivot has a flat female side. Um, as far as manipulation and 
um, just general handling of the knife. It is easy. The one disadvantage of the um, cold steel treadlock is it's just a little bit awkward. You know, instead of, like, and I've talked about this before, you know, on the um, Ritter Hogue, very easy to engage and disengage on the PM2, very easy to engage and disengage. Uh, even a simple liner lock, very easy to engage and disengage. On a triad lock, yeah, it's really strong, but you kind of have to, you know, you can deploy it and then it's like, oh, get your finger in exactly the right position so you don't slice it off and then push it and kind of give it a little shake and then you kind of move your fingers out of the way and then you tip them, you know, that's, it's a little bit more finicky than a regular lock. Is it a deal breaker? No, absolutely not. It's just one of those things where I'm like, yeah, you know, I have to be cognizant of it. You know, somebody who's been using a cold steel knife for their entire life, probably not going to bother them. It's just like everything else. You'll get used to it. But common lock types, the axis, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Hoke, the able lock, <laughs> the compression lock, and your simple liner lock, or your frame locks. Do I have a frame lock up here? Uh, I don't. Um, those are locks that a lot of us, you know, new, newer age kind of fidgety folks are used to. So if you've never handled a cold steel knife, you know, I haven't mentioned this before, but it is going to feel a little bit foreign and a little bit awkward. And you are going to be putting your hands in a position uh, of risk, you know, be, and it's not because there's, it's a flaw in the design of the triad lock. It's because it's different. And you have to make sure when you're doing this, when, you, when you're disengaging this, you have to make sure that your finger is up there so that this unsharpened area is caught by your finger. Because if you're back here and you whip that thing closed, you will get a nice racing stripe on your fingers, definitely. Or removal of your fingers entirely. Probably not on this, but on that cold, uh, if, you're, if you're a cold seal, uh, a spotted kind of guy or a, a Recon 1 XL kind of guy or a 4 Max kind of guy, um, yeah, you, that, that very well could happen, you know, so it's just something to be aware of. Um, not that big of a deal though. Uh, ergonomically, this thing is super comfortable. And despite this thing, not really having any meaningful texturing, except back here, um, on the spine, there's a little bit of jimping, but it's truthfully, it's kind of meaningless. There's no real traction here. Um, the ergonomics themselves, ergonomics themselves actually will lock your hand in. This actually feels very secure. There's no part of me that thinks, oh no, I'm going to drop it. No, it's, it's very secure. It's also very comfortable in this position up here. This is a nice choke up position. The reverse grip also feels nice, nice for those of you um, using your knives that way. Um, all the way around, really, really comfortable. Um, I, I don't know that there's really anything that I would change. I You know, given the nature of this knife, this is a knife that I would take out and use really hard. You know, a knife like this is a knife that I would throw around and beat on and probably pry with and do crazy, I mean, that's my impression of cold steel. Um, that's that's how I would use their knives. And I, I I find it odd that we don't have more meaningful traction back here or meaningful traction up on the spine of the blade because there's definitely going to be situations where I'm going to want to put my fingers up here. Um, so I want that. It might also be nice to have just a little bit down here and a little bit over here because I can see a lot of people using this knife, using it with gloves. Is it a big deal? No. Can you still take this knife out and use it really, really hard and are you going to be satisfied with it? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. This is an awesome knife. And here's the best part. Here's my favorite part about this knife, right? Ergonomics are great. The locking system's great. It's super strong. It's got a great blade steel, great blade design, um, great blade uh, geometry or edge geometry. Um, all that stuff is great. You know, it's got some tiny screws and there's not jimping in some places and, and you got to be a little more cognizant when you're disengaging the lock. But all the way around, this is an excellent package. Here's the best part, right? People are like, shut up and tell us the part that you're talking about. That's the best part. The price. On Blade HQ right now, you can get these for 80 bucks. 80 bucks gets you a great design and S35 VN steel. Um, much like the American Lawman, that puts it at a price point that just makes a lot of other knives between 50 and 100 bucks look kind of stupid. Honestly, I mean, that's mean because that, there's a lot of great knives between 50 and 100 bucks, but... With the Code 4 and the American Lawman being right there, it's like, ugh, like if you really want capability and a good design, you know, for carry. And yeah, this is an eight and a half inch knife, but could you EDC it? Definitely, you definitely could because the folded up profile is really nice, right? This gets a little bit wide here, but in terms of the weight and the over, I mean, it's not a whole lot different than the PM2. I mean, let's put it up. Let's put them all up here. These are all knives that I can comfortably EDC on a day to day basis. 
Code 4 is right in there. Super nice. 80 bucks. S35 VN steel. And the fit and finish is great. In fact, there's only one fit and finish flaw on this whole thing. It's ever so slightly off center. That doesn't matter. Anything, you know, about 100 bucks and back. Um, or even, you know, times, I'll, I'll admit, 150 bucks and back. I'm like, eh, it's not, it's off center. Oh, well, it's not rubbing. No big deal. Excellent knife. I can absolutely 100% recommend this knife. It will go on my most recommended knives playlist. Um, I urge you guys to pick one up. As usual, if it's listed on Blade HQ, something like this. Now, there are definitely knives that are, their prices are fixed. Like, you're not going to go find a brand new Generation 6 XM18 for anything, uh, a 3.5 inch, for anything less than $425 unless Rick is doing something special and it's offered directly by him. Sometimes with cold steel knives, that's not the case. You can find them for less money somewhere else. So on Blade HQ, um, I think the normal going price for these is 80 bucks. In other places, you can probably find them for a little bit less, five, sometimes $10 less. So look around, you know, um, but if you want to make sure that you're getting this knife from an authorized dealer and that you're getting the real thing because there are clones out there, then sometimes it's worth spending a little bit extra money. It's also worth pointing out that this knife comes in a Tanto variant, and I believe a serrated variant for both the clip point and Tanto. There might actually be different versions. I don't know if there's a coded version of this or not. I didn't see it. Um, also something that you should check, check around for. Um, Really excellent knife. Uh, I'm actually considering picking one up um, for myself after having handled this. Um, this is just good. You know, it's a it's a tad bit aggressive looking, but it's more of a normal style knife. You know, it's definitely a knife that you could EDC, but it has more of an outdoor work knife kind of vibe to it. And I think it'll serve well in that setting. And honestly, this is kind of a do it all kind of knife. Um, this is great for so many different things. Um, it's such an excellent design. I, I really, really like this knife. And I knew that I did, you know, because I had handled it and then, you know, watched reviews and heard other people talk about it and then handled it again. And then finally, I got an opportunity to review it on this channel. And it was nice to play with it again and, and nice to um, be able to get my thoughts uh, uh, out on video. So anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it entertaining, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.